Hey everyone, Reed here. Today I'm going to show you one of the coolest features to come out to Power BI in a long, long time. And that feature is visual level filters on slicers. Which means that slicers can now be filtered by columns or measures within the filters pane. Now, there's actually a fantastic article by Marco Russo over at SQL BI that talks about some of the exciting ways you can use DAX to apply filters for slicers. So I'll link to that article in the description down below. However, in this video, I want to walk you through one cool use case for DAX filtering. How to create a dynamic slicer that shows either a list of new or returning customers, depending on your toggle selection. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. So what I'd like to do is walk you through the exact slicer functionality that I'm trying to create. So we have over here customer name. Now observe this as I go ahead and toggle this filter over here. Plus notice that I have customer name, total sales, their first order date, and then a couple of other flags, whether or not they're a new or returning customer, and then this little filter toggle, and I'll discuss all of these individually. So if I go ahead and start to filter this, notice that that list over there on the left for customer name is slowly getting shorter and shorter. If I also change this toggle from new to returning, now what I have in here is a list of returning customers. Now specifically, if I was to scroll down here, let's take a look over here and see how some of this is being computed. So I'm gonna go ahead and select new, so the first person that we have in our list is customer name Aaron Hayes. So that means that it's skipping over all of these. So what I've done is I've created a measure that basically determines the first order date here just for analysis purposes. So we can see that the first order date for Aaron Hayes was on 3-29-2016, which happened in between these two dates here. So they are therefore a new customer. The second person on that list is Aaron Hughes, which is the second person in our customer name over here. Keep going down the list, we have Aaron King and Aaron Kumar continuing down there. Now, the very first person who's a returning customer is Aaron Wang, because they do currently, in this filter date range, have total sales, but they also separately had a first order date. So our previous order on 5-8-2015, which is before this date range. Therefore, that is the second purchase and they are flagged as a returning customer. So if I come over to the toggle and change that to returning, we can see that at the very top of our list, Aaron Wang is the first person listed here. So it's really nice that we're given a list of exactly the customers that we want to see, and that does change depending on the range that we're looking at. If I actually make this very close, there we go, a pretty narrow date range, we only get two returning customers. So it dynamically adjusts every time I select this date here, because that is anchored over here from our calendar table, from the date column there to the order date. So I'm filtering my data based on the order date, and I want to separately within that order date range know who my returning customers are and know who my new customers are. Now let's take a look at the measures and see how these were created. Now the first order date measure that's in here isn't actually used in the final calculation. I just wanted to be able to show you what that was so you can see that as I filtered it down. But all I'm doing is I'm calculating the minimum sales order date and I'm applying an all function to the calendar table just to make sure that it continually grabs that correct first order date per customer name. Now the two important ones are this new and returning flag. That will flag any customer as either new or returning. Now notice that there are some blanks. These are for customers, as you can see, who had a first order date that is after this date range in here. So they are technically a future customer and I didn't need to give them a status just because I don't care about them since they're neither a new or a returning customer given this date filter. But let's take a look at the new and returning flag. So if I open this up, we have a series of variables that result in a final calculation here that is returned at the very end. So let's walk through this one by one. So as we've already seen, I am grabbing the first order date here for my customer. And then separately, I am grabbing the minimum filter date and the maximum filter date. So what this is grabbing is 3-28-2015 and or 11-8-2016. So that's the date range that's being included in here. And then I'm declaring a variable that will calculate whether or not they are a new customer. So using an and statement, do a multi-part, I am checking to see if the first order date is greater than or equal to the minimum filter date so is the order date for that customer greater than 3-20-2015? And it also is that first order date less than 11-8-2016. If that is the case, their first order date is within that filter date range, they are considered a new customer. And that will return true if these conditions are met. 
Now separately down here for returning customer, I've basically taken this, I have copied and pasted that right here, with the one exception being is that I'm saying not. So if the first order date is not greater than or equal to the minimum order date, meaning that it is occurring before it, and separately, it still needs that first order date to also be before the max filter date there as well. So that will make sure that they are considered to be a returning customer. And I personally like to use not because it makes it easy to see the similarities between as an example right here and this thing, with the only difference being that I included a not statement. So it allows for some consistency in there. And now separately, the last thing that I need to make sure to include as well is that they actually had a total sales. So even if they did have a first order date before the filtered date range, did they also separately within my current filtered range have a total sales amount? So if we go back down to our friend here for let's say uh, Abby Sai, they did have a sales amount within this filtered date range and separately their first order date is outside of that range. So that indicates that they have two different orders that occurred. Henceforward, they are a returning customer. So this is a three part check. It checks for that first order date that is less than or equal to the minimum filter date and as well as that first order date that is also less than or equal to the max filter date and then that third condition is just checking right here to make sure they have a total sales and if all three of these are met then it will return a true and now finally the result that I'm calculating is doing a switch true and if new customer equals true call it new if returning customer is true call it returning there we go. And that's the result being returned. So they get one of those two flags. Now, separately, what I have done is I've created a toggle because I want to be able to, for this slicer, just show my new or just show my returning. So what that is, is that is a disconnected table that I have over here that if I come to my data tab and look at my new and returning customers, that is just a single column table with two rows for new and returning that I use the enter data button to create. So that is what is on my slicer and that if I come back over here again and look at my filter toggle, that is this calculation that is allowing me to toggle between those. So I've declared a variable for the toggle selection and I'm basically grabbing the selected value from whatever is in here. In this case, if I select new, the value of new is being returned. If I select returning in here, then the value of returning will be also returned as well. And then I'm just declaring a variable for that previous calculation that I just showed you right here. And then that result, like I'm doing again, is a switch true. And I'm doing a double part condition. If my toggle selection is set for new, and as well if that previous DAX calculation that I made declares that customer is new, return a result of one. Same thing here. If the toggle selection returning and that calculation that I created also declares that customer as returning, flag it as one. Otherwise, for either of any of them that are not declared as new or returning for those conditions, declare it as zero in both of those spots. And then finally, if there is no selection being made on this slicer, automatically assign all customers as a one. And you'll see why I did one and zero here, the kind of the binary result. Now let's come take a look over at customer name and take a look at the filters that I have on this visual. This is that new feature that just came out in Power BI. So that new returning filter toggle, I have set to equal one. So any customer that gets flagged as a one based off of that multi-part condition that I just set up right up here, those customers will be returned and any customer that is filtered, any customer that is flagged as a zero will be filtered out. So that is how it is creating this dynamic thing. As you can see that it's changing that list as I slowly filter my data down. So it's really nice to have that functionality plus the separate ability to individually toggle new versus returning in there. So very handy little trick to have. And again, there's a lot of ways to apply DAX filtering to this, but this was one handy trick that I found just by playing around with it a bit. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked this video, please click or smash that like button below. And if you have anything to say about this video or have a suggestion for a future video, please add that to the comment section down below. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.